Current supply is 19 million inc. Current daily inflation rate is 0.44%. Current annualized inflation is 161%. And so if 0.44% supply of the total supply is being emitted per day, and if, I don't know, what is, is there any indication of, okay, of how much of the ink supply itself is held in liquidity pools, um, then that 0.44% of the, of the total supply is much larger as a percent of the amount that's actively in the liquidity pools. And so the, like, the, the inflation measured against the liquidity pool balances is much larger on a daily basis and so um it's just it's just has like that's just so much to fight through and uh that number can go down the the number can certainly like because the number of units emitted per day is a value controlled by the add and key on that uh master chef contract mm -hmm. and so the inflation can decrease um but as is it you know it's it's inflating at a pretty substantial rate and it's going to people who um you, other than the people that are holding the ink you know the ink rat pulse lp it's like they're hold, they're holding ink the people in like the usdc rat pulse lp they aren't holding ink so like the ink supply is going to people who are holding things other than ink so it's a little different where in hex, like the new inflation is going to people rolling hex um, through staking. So like, you know, that, that, that's like probably the most bearish thing on the price chart about ink is that there's so much inflation and the inflation is primarily going to people who aren't buying ink or aren't otherwise holding the ink. And cool. if they're using that as like income on their liquidity positions, then it's like highly likely to be sold. Is this just a, you know, like a, a price down bear market type of thing where people aren't valuing ink because, you know, there's no new farms right now. You know, PulseX hasn't got these updates and all this stuff. But it's, it's, I guess it goes to my original question, too, is like, what is what makes ink valuable enough again for people to start putting more liquidity? Uh, is it, you know, if the prices are way higher, is the APR way way higher and, and more attractive? You know, when, when single size taking when when pulse X upgrades, is it kind of like planned or it's a time to like, okay, this is not the time where we need to be introducing new features every week for pulse X. This is not the time when ink needs to shine. It needs to shine, you know, when it's ready at a at a better macro condition type of thing. Well, I don't know if if, if like those things actually help ink. Those things maybe help pulse X, but like new farms. I guess new farms, because like I think they'll have to they'll have to really look at the contract. But the way I think it works is that there's like some set number of um, units of ink that can be emitted in total, and then those are allocated based on the allocation points. Like I think it's called like alloc points in the contract per each pair. And so like you know that uh, it doesn't show there on the on the UI there, but like. The USDC from Ethereum Wrap Pulse Pool, that one has some number of total alloc points, and then USDT versus Wrap Pulse has another set of, you know, some amount. And so those percent of the whole is the percent of the total daily inflation that those LPs are qualified to earn. And so more pools, I guess, would spread out that amongst more users, which perhaps could. Because it would lower, like, you know, so a new pool lowers the other guys, the other pools effective APY. So maybe that helps by making it spread out over more users. So it's instead of like, you know, say there's 10 users who are getting all of it. And then to them, it's substantial enough to want to sell at any point in time. Maybe if that's spread over 100 people, they would have to wait longer to sell to like build it up more instead of like, as soon as they can get it, they sell it. So there may be some dynamic there, um, but that doesn't change the total number of ink units that are minted per day. So that's a little bit different. Um, seeing aside staking, I, I mean, again, it, it all comes down to how it's actually implemented and like, you know, what, what's the token that you earn? If that's an ink one, um, I mean, I don't even know if it could be an ink one because 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, unless, yeah, I, I, I'd have to dig into exactly how the master chef contract works to see if single side staking, like could, could it, could the pulse X token address be added as a qualified pair? And then just by depositing your PLSX, then you can earn the ink from that. I mean, I'll have to see if that actually works. I don't think it does. Cause uh, the uni one, I'll have to see how, if uni would have worked, if it was left in when it was accidentally added, but the, so the, I, again, I, I don't know how the single side staking will work. Um, and like, what would the reward be? Uh, but that wouldn't necessarily help ink. Um, the only thing that I think can really help ink is just to reduce, get rid of the farms, <laughs> like make it where, okay. Ink is now fixed supply. Thank you all to the people that provided liquidity. You guys now own all the ink side and then. Wow. What a know. tweet that would be. All right. It says the inks farms are now closed. All the supply is done. Wow. That would, that would be interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Like that, that, that could help ink. But yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't know. Ink. I mean, if pulse X is the bastard son of the whole pulse chain ecosystem, then ink is like the, the bastard, bastard son of the whole thing. <laughs> Careful, you know, Game of Thrones, those, uh, those, those, those lineages do pretty well from time to time. They do. They're pretty Yeah, and, and since it's like the most bearish thing, maybe that's like what makes it the most bullish thing, right? Like, because it's so, like, like, you, you, like, pe and, and I mean, the, people definitely love making up stories about why something like, oh, like, this, this is going to happen, 40 chess, like all this stuff, like, and so, you know, I try to not just like make up stories in my mind about like why something can pump. It's like things will pump because people buy them and don't sell them. Um, but you know, maybe because ink is so bearish, that's like what makes it bullish because like it's the most underrated thing. It's probably the least crowded trade. It's not something mm -hmm. that it's not like everyone has art. Like it's not like all the demand has been absorbed in any way like it's basically been like it kind of looked like the the zen chart the whole time um well, the liquidity is tied right like like wouldn't wouldn't the case if you're going to say why ink is going to go up if nothing else if nothing changes at all wouldn't it just be because if pulse x and pulse chain go up like all the liquidity is tied to ink so therefore it would it would drag it up as well yes yeah, so, so it, it can certainly drag it up but it wouldn't drag it up as much as just like holding the pulse like if the pulse value went up by 10%. That doesn't mean 10% increase in the ink value. Um, you know, maybe it's like whatever, like whatever amount it does go up, like that Delta is like a measure of how much that bonding is in effect. 